good afternoon everyone the most worrisome aspect for any surgeon after performing a procedure is the risk of post operative infection the source of this infection can be from either the operating room environment or instruments or consumables or from the surgeon and staff itself we have come a long way from the dirty crowded semi circular theaters of early centuries to present day modern modular ots but all of us cannot afford to have it moreover setting up an operation theater is a challenging task especially in today's era of medical legal litigations where even a single case of endophthalmitis is enough to finish one's career our course is designed to highlight all these aspects within limited budget and resources well the course is divided into five parts with each topic dealing with an important aspect starting from operation theater designing ot environment preparation patient preparation etiquettes instrument preparation and sterilization techniques i invite all my instructors on stage please come i thank my co instructors especially dr sugata bol who at the last minute accepted my request to be a part of this course now coming on to the first topic that is operation theater designing and layout there are many different ways of designing an ot complex but the essential principles that should be followed in architectural layout and building quality are exclusion of contamination with proper traffic patterns and separation of clean areas from contaminated areas the first and foremost thing to consider is the type of construction that is are we going to construct a new building or are we going to renovate an already existing structure is it going to be an exclusively eye hospital or part of a multi speciality hospital is the facility meant for a single surgeon or are multiple surgeons going to use the facility this is very important as it directly correlates with the number of ot's required which in turn determines the requirement of space always keep a scope of future expansion while designing without any major upheaval ot designing is not just a simple civil engineering work but a combo effort of all the departments therefore make a core design team comprising of senior nurses electricians plumbers administrators builders and of course the surgeon try to visit as many centers as possible in the nearby localities so as to see what works and what does not and also to gain from their experience ot complex has to be located on the upper and innermost part of the facility to minimize dust exposure always set aside a budget and decide its upper and lower limit planning has to be done depending on the availability of funds and space as i said earlier the space requirement depends on the number of ot's and load of surgery decide in the initial phase only if you are planning to offer ga as extra space is needed to keep the anesthesia machine and additional design is needed for suction and oxygen outlet system always use materials which are readily available durable easy to maintain and resistant to microorganisms ot complex comprises of changing room both for surgeons and staff patient preparation area patient waiting area transfer base clean and dirty corridors sterilization room store scrub area and the main theater all these areas are divided into different zones so what are these zones zones are areas of varying degrees of cleanliness in which bacteriological count diminishes from outer zone to inner zone <coughs> ot complex is divided into four zones protective zone comprising of changing room and transfer base clean zone comprising of sterilization area and sterile disposable storage area operation theater and scrub area form aseptic zone while disposal zone comprising of dirty utility and disposal areas from each ot zoning is very important to maintain the unidirectional flow of movement and this is how zoning is done there should be separate entry and exit for patient as well as for doctors and staff there should not be any toilets inside the clean area toilet should always be before entry to the changing room OT room should preferably be square in shape and it should have an area of 6 to 6.5 meter square for better aseptic 3.5 meters of height is sufficient if you are planning for a normal ceiling 
but a height of more than 4.25 meters is needed for convenience of setting of lamina plenum and extra plexum. Doors should be at least 1.2 meters wide for easy patient access. Better to have PUF sandwich, stainless steel panel or EGB panel doors. Doors should be fitted with vision panels so as to avoid unnecessary disturbances in staff movement. Sliding doors are always preferred over double action leaf type or hinge swinging type of doors so as to save space and to prevent air turbulences. Ideally, those should be electrically operated hermetically sealed so as to control air pressure. Walls should be smooth, non-porous, non-reflective, easy to clean and better to have again stainless steel or EGP panel walls. For this, initially a framework is let down. This framework can be either of brick or of steel itself. Upon this framework, POF sandwich, stainless steel panels or EGP panels are mounted on either side which should be coated with an antibacterial paint. Paint should always be of light color. Tiles can also be placed instead of steel if there is any budget issue. The grouting in the tiles can become dirty and harbor bacteria and fungus. Therefore, care has to be taken to clean the tiles and grout regularly. If there is a gap, it should be sealed and waterproof immediately. Flooring must essentially be smooth, shiny, slip resistant and impervious with minimum joints. Floor should be inset mosaic with copper plates so as to carry away any static electricity produced. Or it can be made anti-static with either PVC roll or epoxy. Tiles can also be used but again care has to be taken to maintain it properly. Stainless steel panels or EPG panels backed with gypsum or calcium can be used for fall sealing if budget permits. Otherwise, plain metallic boards or calcium silicate or gypsum boards can be used, but again, they should be coated with antibacterial paint. And preferably, the color of the ceiling should be white. There should be a minimum height of three meters from the finished floor level. Corners of the room should be coved or rounded off to prevent dust accumulation and for easy cleaning. Scrub area has to be located immediately outside each OT. The flooring in this area essentially should be known slippery. Taps should be either foot pedal operated or elbow operated or infrared sensor operated. CSST room should be equipped with requisite plumbing to supply RO water of 15 ppm and a drain line. The most careful CSSTs are divided into three areas, that is decontamination area, sterilization zone, and sterile storage zone. Primary cleaning of instruments is done in decontamination zone, and a negative air pressure is maintained so as to prevent rushing of air into outer spaces when the doors are open. A simple way of accomplishing this is by using powerful exhaust fan. The sterilization zone is the zone where Final packing and sterilization of instruments is done and always a positive air pressure is maintained. Sterile storage area lies adjacent to sterilization zone and it is used to store sterile packs and supplies. These are the parameters which should be maintained in CSST. Storeroom should always be big enough to have a provision for storing intraocular lenses, less frequently used instruments, spare instruments and dresses and gowns. Ideally, the cupboards in the storeroom should be within the wall and it should be made of stainless steel while the shelves should be made of glass. But if this arrangement is not feasible, then even slatted metal or terrazzo can also be used. The cupboard should start about 30 centimeters from ceiling and finish about 20 centimeters from the floor so as to avoid dust accumulating on the items. Good lighting is needed in OT. Light should always be flush to the ceiling and position of operating table needs to be decided beforehand before placing the socket. Take care not to have any cables on the floor to avoid tripping of staff. Always use double sockets with proper earthing fuse box. Theater must have a generator backup in case of power failure and if power supply is not reliable, it is worthwhile to put all the machinery onto UP. Oxygen and nitrous oxide cylinders must be kept in a separate room with easy access, while fire extinguishers should always be placed, uh, placed strategically at convenient locations. Do not use extension cables in OT. 
clean filtered water should always be used for cleaning instrument and for scrubbing before starting the OT, while ordinary tap water can be used for cleaning OR. A separate overhead tank should be placed in the OT which needs to be cleaned regularly. Now coming on to the most vital aspect of any operation theater, that is air ventilation system. The purpose of AHU is to control the temperature, pressure and humidity as well as to dilute airborne bacterial contamination. HVAC system has three parts, AHU with three chambers, supply duct and laminar airflow plenum. Now in the first chamber, there is a provision for fresh air entry as well as return air entry. From here, air passes through a set of 10 microns filter into the second chamber where it is cooled and compressed and then blown at a desired pressure into the third chamber through a set of 5 microns filters. From the third chamber, air comes via this ducting to the laminar airflow plenum where terminal 0.3 micron filters are placed. This is how the laminar airflow plenum looks like and from this air straight away enters into the theater. Now these are the recommendations given by CDC and Healthcare Infection Control Practices Advisory Committee as well as by NADH, a temperature of 21 degrees centigrade plus minus 3 degrees centigrade with a humidity of 20% to 60% and a pressure of 2.5 pascals should be maintained in OR. There should be at least 20 air exchanges in an hour with minimum of uh, four of them being fresh air changes. Well, uh, CDC recommends having three filters, while NABH mandates the use of at least two filters. I, I'm using the word at least two filters, so you have to be careful with that. What is so unique about HVAC? Why everybody is talking about HVAC these days? Because AHU of HVAC is both an air purification and air filtration unit and there is a provision for fresh air entry and these two are the most important parameters in decreasing the microbiological load inside the theater. That is why window ACs and split ACs should never ever be placed since these are pure recirculating units and they may contain pockets of microbial growth. HVAC system can be a little bit expensive, but if budget is an issue, I would say better to cut down on other things rather than compromising on this particular aspect. Filters need to be cleaned regularly and regular microbiological monitoring or particulate count monitoring is necessary. To summarize, designing an OT complex seems to be a tough task, but it can be made easy by proper planning and by utilizing resources in a channeled way. Have a happy and safe surgery. Thank you. I would now like to invite the next speaker, Dr. Sugar Spot. I would like to thank Dr. Singh for inviting me uh, in this IC and thank you for coming in this IC. My topic is how to clean and fumigate the OT. So why should we clean the OT? Why should we have a sterilized OT? We all know that sterile si uh, surgical site infection is the second most common cause of hospital acquired infection. And the s they can lead to considerable amount of morbidity and even can have high mortality. The source of this SSI can be endogenous where the patient's own skin or the mucous membrane can cause the infection or can be exogenous where the surgeon or the surgical personnel, the operati operating room environment, and the instruments which we are using can lead to infection. Hence, keeping a clean, sterile environment in the operation theater can reduce the surgical site infection. So the next question is, which is more important, cleaning or disinfection? Probably both are Excuse me, the sli slides are not fitting in. So uh, probably both, both of them are equally important. Like cleaning removes the contaminant, dust and the organic matter, whereas disinfection reduces the number of microbes. There are three levels of disinfections in the OT. 
the high level disinfection, intermediate level and the low level. The high level disinfections kill all the organisms except the, some of the bacterial spores and prion and is <coughs> it is done by the sterilants which are available here in form of bacillosid uh, glutaraldehyde. The intermediate level and the low level disinfections are also being used for certain types. Now cleaning and disinfection of OT after having a new OT is very important. After having a new OT or after having a civil work done, what we should do? We should first ensure that the civil work is being completed and ensure all the movable equipment has been shifted out. Then wipe all the surfaces of the OT, all the fixed equi equipments like the OT lamp uh, with liberal amount of soap and water and repeat the wiping until no visible dust are there. This is very important because this mechanical action removes so much of the spores and improves the action of the disinfectant subsequently used. Next, once this is wiped, wipe the surfaces again including the ceiling with the high level disinfectant. That is the th uh, first gen uh, the high level disinfectant as I spoke earlier and then allow it to dry completely. Then move the equipments inside. These equipment should be cleaned outside the OT before being moving in and then repeat the process of wiping the floor and the walls up to where your hands reach. You can leave out the ceiling at this stage with the high level disinfectant again and allow them to dry again completely. Now you have to do fogging of the OT which I'll speak later on and then your OT is ready for sampling. You should take sample minimum from the OT tables, uh, OT surface, stable surface, from the OT light, from the sterile instrument, trolley surface, anesthetic machine, any two walls which should be above the level of the OT table and also from the air conditioner. Once the sampling is done, it shouldn't be OT used on that day, the OT should be closed and on the next day, again, the, <coughs> the OT should be wiped with high level um, uh, disinfectant kept the OT closed for an hour with the ventilation system off and repeat the OT sampling again. Then on the third day, repeat this. So this is very important. This You are repeating the same thing again and again, basically for your patient's safety. So once this is repeated, you wait for the swab result. If the swab result come negative or if there is first growth of skin commensals in any of the nine swabs, then you can start the OT. But if there is growth of uh, spores bearing organisms or aerobic gram negative organisms then the OT should be wiped again and fogged again and sample should be sent again. If the results are not satisfactory even now you should take help of the infection control board. If it's available in your hospital good otherwise you have to take control of individual societies. Now in general roofs are not cleaned regularly, it's cleaned as I've said during remodeling or, or when there is accumulation of good amount of dust. And ceiling fan shouldn't be used in the OT because it sprays the aerosols. The floors actually get contaminated quickly and depends on the number of the people present, it get uh, contaminated quite quickly. 1% of the microbes present on the floor are pathogenic. Simple detergent reduces the flora by 80% whereas addition of disinfectant, especially high level disinfectant, reduces the flora at much higher level. And it should be decontaminated with vacuum cleaner and wet mopping. It sh broom shouldn't be used again because it actually helps in spreading the bacterial flora in the environment. The next OT cleaning has to be done on the day of the surgery. This should be performed every day even if the OT is not being used. Then the surgeon or the anesthetist shouldn't enter the OT before the cleaning is complete. Clean all the horizontal surfaces by wet wiping with high level disinfectant and then ensure color coded waste collection bags are placed and keep the OT closed for 10-15 minutes with ventilation equipment on and then you should start using the OT. The OT should be cleaned in between the procedures as well. We quite often neglect these steps in busy cataract session but especially after long oculoplastic um, uh, cases or retinal cases the operation table should be cleaned, the theater equipment should be cleaned with disinfectants and any spillage of blood and body fluid <coughs> should be decontaminated with chlorine solution and biohazard should be discarded and don't keep discarded soil, soil ground within the operation theater. 
and damp mopping should be done in between cases, at least cover three to four feet around the perimeter of the OT table. And again, at the end of the uh, uh, day, the OT should be cleaned. All the door handles, the tops, the sinks should be cleaned with detergent and clean the floor with detergent, firstly with detergent. Make sure your OT table is moved and the, it's washed underneath and finally mop with high level detergents. Now coming to fumigation after cleaning, the origin of fogging was traced back to 19th century when Joseph Lister actually used carbolic acid to improve the uh, and asepsis of the haircut. Fumigation is normally done uh, by formalin using formalin. What happens, formaldehyde vapor is produced at low temperature which uh, decontaminates the air of the environment by alkylating the amino acids and sulfidryl uh, group of the proteins. It is widely used, though it is hazardous, it is widely used because of the fact it is quite cheap. And what we do, it, uh, we have to calculate how much formalin has to be used. And there are two ways. One is electric boiler fumigation, where for 1,000 cubic feet of OT, 500 ml of 40% formalin is added to 1,000 ml of water in the electric boiler, and is, the boiler is switched on for 45 minutes to produce formaldehyde. And the other way is using it with potassium permanganate, where 1,000 cubic feet, uh, for 1,000 cubic feet, 450 grams of potassium permanganate is added to 500 ml of formalin. And the seal, uh, room is sealed for 24 to 48 hours. Now, fumigation or fogging is no longer used in the Western literature, as we have learned in the previous uh, sessions. And most of the international theater <coughs> now have the, what we call the uh, heat heated ventilation, air conditioning system, or HVAC system. The advantage, as Dr. Singh has already mentioned, I'm not going in details, it gives, it actually controls the air temperature, humidity, it also controls the odor, remove the contaminated air, and minimize the risk of transmission of airborne microorganism. And airborne HVAC system with air handling unit helps to maintain the positive pressure in the OT, and hence, mm, with HEPA filter, it gives additional control in the safety. But in India, the OT facilities actually ranges from primitive air conditioning system to high advanced laminar system. And all the units, all the OT theaters are not NABH accredited. And so there are different units following different procedures. Hence, OT sterilization is divided normally in two categories, with disinfection with HAVAC system and uh, disinfection of the OT without HVAC system. For disinfection of OT with uh, heated uh, ventilator uh, system, air condition system, actually fogging is not required. But you have to make sure the ventilation system which you are using is designed properly, is validated, and testing is done. The maintenance of the air handling unit is done regularly, and also the weekly air count is monitored. And also your staff should know how the OT is cleaned because with HVAC system, much importance is given in wiping and cleaning of the OT with high uh, level disinfectant. Whereas uh, disinfecting with OT with, without HVAC system, we depend on fogging. <coughs> Though fogging hasn't demonstrated in any study to de uh, decrease the hospital acquired infection, this is probably the only way when we don't have the HVAC system in our OT. And at the same time, the formalin, as we have said, is hazardous and it is also uh, unreliable to some extent. What precaution we take in this is we are replacing formalin with glutaraldehyde, which is an aldehyde-based product, and they have deep penetrating capability, has no resistant uh, strain, and is effecting against both bacteria, virus, microbacteria, and everything else. And after fogging, air sampling has to be done and the record has to be kept. After all cases are over, uh, on the day when you are doing the fogging, keep the ventilation system off, turn the AC off, ensure all the equipments are well covered be so that the fogging liquid doesn't enter in it. Prepare the solution of, uh, we use bacillo seed, uh, 20 ml of bacillo seed we use in two liter of distilled water, and we place the fogger in the corner of the OT, we uh, place the liquid in the container of the fogger, and switch it on. The nozzle is directed 
opposite corner of the room at 45 degree. Nowadays, we get fogger, which actually rotates 360 degree and uh, spreads the fogger, fogging material uniformly. And once the fogging is done, once you can see the fog through the window, you have to keep the OT closed for at least one hour, and then the OT is ready to be used. You have Before using the OT, you have to inspect if the floor is wet, then you need to keep the OT closed for a few more minutes so and uh, to dry it up. Also check the floor and the working surface, whether they're too sticky or whether they're too slippery. In that case, you are either using too much of fogging material and uh, to make sure you are correcting this, or if it still persists, you can reduce the fogging time by a few minutes. Few more, couple of minutes. So these are the some commonly used fogging materials uh, or some commonly used uh, uh, disinfectants in our thing. They either work by damaging the lipid membrane or by denaturing the proteins or by alkylation like bacillosid, alkylation of the amino acid and sulfur drill group. We use bacillosid in our OT, which is formaldehyde free, and it provides complete asepsis within 30 to 60 minutes. Cleaning up with detergent and carbolic acid is not required after this, and formalin fogging is also not required if we are using this. An OT is shut down um, for 24 hours is not required. It can be used after one hour of fogging. This is another thing which we can use. So normally what we do for roof, we use 2% bacillosid once in three months. For walls, 2% bacillosid daily, twice, up to where your hand can reach. Floor, daily, twice, and sinks and OT furniture sh should be uh, cleaned every day. And air heat heating unit and air exchange handling unit should be cleaned once in every three months. Thank you. Thank you for your patience requiring. I would invite all of you to AIOC 2021 in Calcutta. Please visit our lounge there. You will be getting 1,500 rupees discount for from our liver registration. So all are welcome to AIOC 2021. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Supriya, for inviting me to be a part of your IOC. So today, I would be speaking on the patient preparation etiquette. So <coughs> in any healthcare organization, in order to excel, you need to maintain the quality of clinical care and also have excellence in the service delivery. So patient, patient safety is the important cornerstone in dealing with this. So whenever we uh, see any patient, basically it, comes, it, it is a teamwork, where from our OPD, uh, our front office staff, our surgeons, the counselors, our, uh, uh, the, uh, the people in the, uh, in the patient care, uh, those who are involved in the patient care, they all are involved. So uh, unless there is coordination there, it won't happen. So imagine driving to your uh, hospital on a road like this, which is chaotic. Uh, would you like to drive on, uh, on a road like that or where the uh, traffic moves seamlessly? That, why, why does this happen? Because the sec in the second picture, uh, people obey the traffic rules. So there are definite etiquettes out there. So you would need etiquettes or protocols for a smooth functioning of any area in, in an hospital. So what is an etiquette? They are set of rules that control accepted behavior in a particular social group or situations. So etiquettes, they would uh, help in clear communication, which would enhance our efficiency. It would at, uh, thereby we can achieve excellence and safety in patient care, reduce our chances of error, and we, we can have an optimum resource utilization there. So today, my presentation, over the next few minutes, I uh, like the first important step in any patient preparation would be identification of the patient. Uh, the next would identify and document it. Then you prepare the patient, you transfer the patient into the OR, transfer the patient out, and then incident reporting. So this is a very important step, how to identify a patient. So you can, uh, whenever a patient walks into your uh, OPD, first you need to identify whether you're dealing with the uh, right patient, like you need to uh, check the name, the MR number, address, and 
when the patient is posted for surgery, he can have these identification tags available uh, depending uh, or prioritize them. Maybe you can use the red colors for the right eye, the left color, the blue ones for the left eye. So that becomes easier to identify. Then you need to check for the advice, the diagnosis, the nature of surgery, uh, check for allergy. It's very important because, and that needs to be highlighted and marked there so that it's not missed by any of your staff. Uh, and the most, uh, before starting this, it's very important to know what language the patient understands. And in case uh, the patient doesn't understand the normal language, then even a mention of that needs to be done. And uh, of course, remembering about people with hearing disabilities. Then check whether an informed consent has been taken. Uh, the consent should be uh, also signed by the uh, patient. Uh, the uh, sub, uh, if the patient cannot sign, then it, uh, uh, either a thumb impression or if uh, or a substitution decision maker in case of a minor uh, in a patient, and the surgeon even needs to sign. Uh, check for all the blood investigations or ECG and other tests. They need to be there before the patient is shifted into the OR. If a patient is scheduled for cataract surgery, biometry reports, you need to check whether it's of the <coughs> same patient. If there are multiple biometry reports, then keep the one which you want to use. Uh, a very important uh, thing which we all miss is checking for the lacrimal apparatus. So remember to do a syringing for all the patients. Uh, and since all most of our patients are elderly, uh, we would want a medical clearance uh, or a pre-anesthetic check checkup before these patients are scheduled for surgery. So in addition, making a note of the general appearance, like if a patient has spondylitis or any deformity, so if you if a note is given, then uh, you can take special uh, uh, change. You can make special changes while positioning the patient. Uh, most of these patients have come to the hospital the first time, and they are anxious. Uh, so you need to calm them down. There you need counseling. There you very often we see claustrophobic patients who cannot uh, sleep with the drapes on their head. There there are drapes available where. Uh, which is transparent in both eyes, like the patient can keep the eye open, or maybe you may need to schedule these patients where, uh, on general anesthesia. So ensure that if a patient has shortness of breath, uh, uh, has he taken nebulization, is there oxygen in the OT, you need to uh, confirm these before you take up the patient for surgery. Uh, a very important aspect is the pa personal hygiene. All the patients are encouraged to take a bath and shave, and uh, uh, if like particularly patients who come from outreach camps, if they are all made to wash the face, hands, and feet, and then only uh, uh, taken up for, for <coughs> further preparation there. So they've been already been told like not to wear jewelry watches, but despite this, many of them come with bangles and nose pins and all. You need to see that they are adequately covered. In female patients, <coughs> it would be better if you could uh, have plates so that they don't have problems lying down. They can lie down properly. Uh, we see patients who have hearing aids. It's very important uh, to see uh, if, if possible, uh, switch the hearing aid to the other other ear if the patient can hear. And otherwise, if you are operating, if the hearing aid is on the same side on which you are operating, you ensure that the drape is uh, the draping is done properly so that water doesn't seep through and enter the ear. There, the false teeth should be removed. You need to check about the medications, whether the, uh, they have taken uh, the hypertensive medications. If it's a diabetic, uh, uh, you need to prioritize these patients, maybe take them up for surgery early, or um, uh, if, like, uh, ask about the in, if they are on insulin, ask about the insulin, have they taken the food, and um, if needed, like, you don't want an hypoglycemic attack happening in the OT. So you can take them up earlier. Then check also about ocular medications. So we every hospital has their own pre-operative antibiotic pro prophylaxis. So whatever is uh, ac uh, accepted by your hospital, you can use that. And in addition to the uh, 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 antibiotic prophylaxis, many of our patients are on uh, anti-glaucoma medication. So you all need to check that also. B the most important thing is that look for redness and discharge. So any redness or discharge, even in the contralateral eye, you need to assess the cause. 
and postpone the surgery if needed. So you cannot take, a uh, take up a patient if there is any sign of infection in the eye. So ensuring that you have a cardiac monitor, a pulse oximeter is very important uh, part. And uh, then once the blood pressure, uh, the sugars and all have been che uh, checked and it's all uh, cleared, then you can ask the patient to shift into the OR clothes. So there you need to ensure that the patient wears a cap and uh, all the hair and everything is covered, a shoe cover, and then we go ahead and go ahead with the marking of the site. This is a very important uh, step, and before marking, the nurse should be encouraged to ask the patient uh, about uh, which eye um, uh, the surgery is planned, and then go ahead and mark the, mark the uh, site. And you sometimes you in these elderly patients, you may need to prepare an IV line. You are the, some of these patients would need manit also. Remember uh, to ask the patient to <coughs> use the restroom before shifting these patients into the OR. So most of our uh, surg surgical procedures involve dilated pupils. So, but before dilatation, putting any drop, you need to look into the file, looking for allergy, the advice which eye has been advised, is there a contraindication? Like for a trabeculectomy, obviously you would not want dilatation. So there you need to uh, be careful. And if each OT, you need to open a new drop there and document when the first drop was instilled. And the next person who instills it is supposed to write the time again. So you, you can uh, keep a tab how many times the drop has been put. Suppose it's a non-dilating pupil. Even if you put 10 times, that pupil is not going to dilate. So, so you need to know uh, when to stop. And since most of our cases are on topical anesthesia, like you can instill the anesthetic drop, and it is it would be good if you can instill it in both eyes so that you can get the proper cooperation on the table. And But the last and the most important step here is instilling povidone 5% as the last drop before you shift the patient into the OR. So, and there you need to remember that at least a five minute contact time needs to be given. So this step is very important. And you would not want IOLs to be stacked like this inside the OR. So ensure that uh, the IOL which is meant for the patient is taken uh, into the OR along with the backup IOL. And if the patient has other conditions like pseudo -ex where you would need a CTR or an iris or any other specific viscoelastic, you need to ensure that that is available in hand. And special precautions uh, need, need to be taken for children. Children, usually, they are uh, fasting, so maybe you need to schedule them early. Uh, you need to allow the uh, mother to enter till the recovering area so that the child is uh, calmed down. For physically and mentally challenged uh, patients, you need to ensure that there's a wheelchair or a trolley to transfer, and even they should be handled carefully. Patients with HIV, uh, you not only need to protect the patient, but the, uh, the, uh, the dog, you, you need to protect yourself and your staff. So it's very important to wear the double gloves, you schedule that surgery properly, autoclaving of the instruments after the surgery, segregation of the waste and how to dispose it, that's very <coughs> important. And uh, during the course of these, before transferring into the OT, at any time the uh, patient can, uh, there can be a cancelling of the surgery because of any issue. There we should not make uh, as if the patient is at fault um, for, the, for resulting in the cancelling of the surgery. There you need to counsel the patient and uh, calm them down and reschedule the surgery. So the next, you are transferring the patient into the OR. So once the nurse takes it here, WHO has given us a surgical safety checklist where, to ensure that a correct procedure and site is done. And so the check is done at three points. One is before the anesthesia, which is called a sign-in. One is before the incision, which is called the timeout. And one is before the patient leaves the OR, that is called the sign-out. So sign in is basically before giving the incision, again, the doctor uh, or the block person will again confirm the name, the eye, check for allergy, uh, ensure that a oximeter and cardiac monitor is available and the patient is on that, uh, check for the, ex before injecting any drugs, check for the date of expiry uh, and 
It's very important that you clean the area with povidone iodine, wear a glove, ensure that a cart, crash cart is available, and um, remember uh, uh, to dispose of the needles and syringes uh, properly. So uh, then, after, then once the patient is shifted into the OR, a cleaning has to be done again. A cleaning has to be done with povidone iodine and proper draping of the head to ensure that the hair is not. Nothing comes into the operating uh, field, and uh, you like. Uh, then you go ahead and put the surgical drape there. So this is how that the WHO uh, surgical safety list looks like. You can have your own ones. This is one which we have at our hospital. The first picture is the pre-op list, which is there, which we, uh, which the surgeon fills before the surgery, and that is attached to the. Uh, microscope there which the surgeon can see while operating if he wants and then uh, while transferring out again you need to uh, be careful about this any special advice post operative dis, uh, instructions and in the discharge summary ensure that it is a discharge summary of the same of the same patient which you are intending to give and the uh, the diagnosis the surgery the date of admission and all the post op instructions should be given legibly in patient's language which they can understand you cannot use the word terms like bid qid and all those like you need to give specific instructions there and even you need to give uh, emergency contact phone numbers so that the patient can contact you and and despite all our efforts accidents and mistakes do do happen so uh, you need to encourage your staff to re report uh, deviations do not get angry create a culture of no blame create an incident reporting form, do a root cause analysis, and institute corrective measures. So a meticulous patient preparation is a synergistic action. Basically, it involves the coordination of all the team members. And uh, uh, create your own checklist. And um, uh, uh, doing this would help us go in uh, a great way in ensuring the patient safety there. Thank you. Manish, who will be talking on instruments preparation. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you, Dr. Supriya, for this invitation. In fact, uh, when I think six, seven months back, when Supriya approached me for this talk, I thought it will be an easy talk to prepare. And when I started studying about this topic, I realized it's like we as an ophthalmologist, especially who are working in institutes, hardly know anything about how actually an instrument should be prepared and what are the NABH guidelines and what are the guidelines given by the company. So while preparing this, I realized not a, it was a more of a learning lesson for me. I hope I can pass on some of the information to you also. Instrument preparation is important not only for preventing infection, rather what is more bigger problem is the inflammation or the task. Because all these instruments which we are using do contain debris and chemicals and when you're cleaning the instrument with disinfectants, and with enzymes, you are somehow passing on some chemicals on these. And we know that our eyes are very sensitive to these ingredients, whether these are debris or blood remnants or fat remnants. Even the enzymes, they can cause severe inflammation. So majority of the inflammation which happens in the eye are because of the instrument cleaning is not correct or not adequate. So TAS is something which is more created by ourselves rather than by the patients. So there are certain general principles. One very important, we should read about it. If possible, we could take uh, help from people who are qualified in this. And training of the staff is extremely important because a lot of time we assume that the staff is doing what is right, but we should train them, we should regularly check, and we should maintain a proper record, not only for medical legal purpose, but also we make sure that these procedures are followed properly. So how the instrument moves, basically once you uh, give the instrument to your sister, it is segregated, then a cleaning of the instruments are done, then it has to be dried because wet instruments tend to develop more microbial infection, then a proper inspection has to be done, then repacked, sterilized, and then back to the sterilized zone and the OT. So this is a circle and every instrument has to pass through. Cleaning of instruments can be done with a normal distilled water or preferably with a reverse osmosis water. Both of them are okay. Some companies recommend using deionized water. 
but reverse osmosis or a distilled water is okay. You have to do a proper cleaning and proper rinsing and flushing of the instruments, mainly to remove all the debris. Preferably, whatever debris is there in the lumen of the instruments, like the OVDs or the lens material, whatever is there inside the instruments. Also, keep the instrument wa moist while you are transferring the instrument from the OT to the OVD uh, to the uh, cleaning area. Because if the instrument dries up, these viscoelastic materials get dried up, and then cleaning of the instrument becomes even more difficult. So, transferring them in a sterile water bath is a very good option which can be used. Flushing has to be initiated in the OT itself. So, the assistant should start the flushing, should do flushing once or twice in the OT itself, and then transfer to the cleaning area for proper decombination. Now, a lot of companies recommend using these enzyme determined. I was going through the American Academy guideline also, and they do recommend. But one of the problem with using this enzyme, the enzyme definitely helps you cleaning those blood, fat, and debris better. But this enzyme, even if a small amount is left in the eye, can lead to severe inflammation. So in case you're using enzyme, your cleaning has to be very stringent, or else you can skip the enzyme for your patients. Ultrasonic cleaning, if it's available with you, is good because this causes vibration, this causes proper cleaning, especially of the instrument which has lumen. So ultrasonic instru instruments are important. But every day, at the end of the day, the, the cleaner itself has to be cleaned with uh, isopropyl alcohol to make sure that doesn't have any microbial contamination. Most companies recommend single use of the FACO tips, but the recommendation by the American Academy says that even up to 20 times it can be easily used because too much of use of the FACO tips is important not only to cut down the cost, but also because of the excessive wastage of these aluminum titanium alloys. If you're using the FACO tips and you see that your cutting is having a problem, then you can discard but discarding for every case is not recommended by the American Academy. This is a very nice video given to me by Dr. Ayan Manto from Disha, where they have made a video of how actually an instrument cleaning should be done. So these are certain indicators which we should use for the water which we are using for cleaning the instrument. In this case, you are using the distilled water and they are trying to check the total particulate matter in the water. Since it's distilled water, it should ideally be zero, but it is showing three ppm. The recommendation is the ppm should not be more than 40. You should also be checking the pH of the water which you are using for cleaning. pH should be acidic. The maximum pH which is recommended is 6.5. These indicators are easily available with the company. You can arrange them. The uh, autoclave machine which are recommended are preferably a class 2 autoclave machine. Preferably it should be a horizontal autoclave and not a vertical autoclave. Every day morning before starting the autoclave, you should check the autoclave. You can use various tests. One of the tests is the Bowney and the Dick test, where you, in this case, the test is done. It takes around 25 to 30 minutes. You insert the kit into the machine, and the autoclave is started. After 28 to 30 minutes, when the test is over, you remove it, and you check whether the color has changed or not. If there is a change of color, it indicates from uh, blue to black. It indicates that the autoclave machine is working correctly. If the change of color is inadequate, it may indicate there is some leakage or the vacuum is not building properly. This test has to be done every day and you should maintain a record of this also for your medical purpose and also important to see that your machine is working properly. So this is the OT and this is the pass box. In OT, your temperature, humidity has to be maintained properly. I think Dr. Sagat has already covered that part. Once the OT is over, all the disposable materials should be properly disposed in different dustbins. Cleaning of the FACO handpiece is also important. In this case, since they are using the FACO handpiece for four or five cases, they are using specially designed handpiece covers to maintain the sterility. But the tip has to be changed in every case. You sterilize the tip and then again reuse it. You can see here the assistant is changing the gloves because now he's preparing for the second case. In this case, what he will do, he'll first change the tip of the FACO handpiece. And he'll also insert a separate handpiece cover to ensure the sterility of the handpiece. You can see this is the instrument box where the FACO tips are being placed. So now you are applying the new FACO handpiece. And you need to tighten it as recommended by the company. In our setup, we use handpiece only for one case, so we re-sterilize it for every case. For that, you need to maintain at least three or four cases, especially if you have a high volume surgery. So once you have 
clean date whatever material has to be discarded it goes into the pass box you don't open the gate of the instrument because that maintains the sterility of the ot this pass box contain the uv filter these are the uv light which also has got antimicrobial property once one of the door is opened the other door is not open once you close the first door then the second door is opened that pass box goes into the dirty area there these things has to be segregated properly so whatever municipal waste are there that goes into the dust bins for so you can see you can these are the black gowns the plastic waste has to go into the red box so the segregation has to be done by the sister the instrument has to be separated from all the material which has to be discarded and the material which needs to be incinerated sharp instrument has to be kept in separate boxes which has to later been destroyed so you can see the sharp instruments are being separated and the plastic material are separated in a separate dustbin and then whatever instrument has to be cleaned and reused goes to the cleaning area now once we enter the cleaning area the cleaning has to be done first with the normal water the basic idea is to clean whatever viscoelastic material whatever debris lens material is there clean it with a proper toothbrush this toothbrush has to be discarded every day don't keep reusing it for a long time once you have done the cleaning with the normal water then you have to clean again with the ro water ro water has a very low ppm so this is very good for for dissolving all the ingredients in the especially in the lumen this flushing of all the lumen instruments like the ia tape and the faco tape has to be done at least 4 to 5 times the recommendation that at least you should be using 100 ml of water and 100 ml of air to flush these tips once you have done that proper drying again is extremely important oh i'm sorry so once you have cleaned it it is passed to the packing area now you can see uh, sorry now uh, this drying has can be done with uh, hair dryer which we use in some cases but the recommendation is using oxygen or a pressurized air after drying instrument should be checked especially the tapes and the lumen should be checked under a illuminated magnifier and clean with a lint free paper make sure there are no debris make sure there are no residuals left then they should be properly packed dried and then properly packed in the instrument box with a silicon bed you can see all of the instruments are dried and then they are properly packed for being autoclaves these are indicators you can use class 1 or class 5 indicator every indicator you should mention then from where the ot instrument has come and which type of instruments you are indicating in this case you can see it's a yellow color so once you autoclave the color becomes black which indicates that the autoclave has happened properly now this is properly packed in specially designed papers these papers can be used for both uh, autoclave and also for the eto this paper laminates also contain an indicator here if you see very clearly on the side you can see you can see here there are some colors this can also be used to indicate whether the autoclave is working properly or not and these are gun indicator which is placed over the surface of these packs the pack has to be a double packing not a single packing so that if one of the pack leaks the second pack gives you as extra protection once these proper packings are done in these cage baskets all these packs are properly placed to be placed inside the autoclave again there are various types of autoclaves available like the vertical and the horizontal the recommendation is to use a horizontal autoclave because in vertical autoclave the instrument kept in the lower part tend to get wet and as i was mentioning wet instrument tend to in attract more microbial infection so we should also use a horizontal autoclave as designed here the instruments and linen should be autoclave separately in this case we are putting the linens first which has to be reused so you can place it here once you have placed the boxes completely then you close it and then accordingly as per the recommendation you have to use the autoclave machine yeah as you can see here once you have tightly sealed it then there are different cycles available for instrument for the linen because the temperature recommendations are different for for instrument you need to have a higher temperature 134 degree c for linen you can have a lower temperature these are specially designed mittens for holding this because the safety of the staff is also very important because they are handling very hot instruments so they may get injured once autoclave has been done now this passes again to the sterile zone 
from there through the pass box it will be entered into the ot so this is the cycle which i was mentioning every instrument has to go through to make sure you have the least possible infection and the least possible inflammation thank you so much this is one article you can go through if you have time this very nice article available free the oic task force guideline how instrument cleaning has to be done thank you so much dr manish there's a question for you here yeah. what is the role of flash sterilization in cases where we don't have adequate amount of instrument we have limited number of instruments and you are working in a high volume setup when you need to do multiple surgeries we do often use flash sterilizers where the time takes around 4 minutes maximum to 5 minutes ideally they are not right because once you use a flash sterilizer the instrument remains wet and they are prone for infection but in case using flash sterilizer you should use the instrument same day don't store it if you're using the flash sterilizer maximum within 3 to 4 hours the instrument should be used okay. thank you thank you so much the next talk is by dr kumar ravi on sterilization techniques Thank you, Dr. Supriya, for having me in this talk. Uh, thank you, Dr. Manish, for covering the topic. Uh, in continuation with the same, uh, I'll be speaking on sterilization techniques and quality indicators. No financial interest. Like, what would be a quality care? The quality care for me would be doing the right thing, the right way. When we talk of sterilization, a lot of things depends upon personal choice, economic viability, and other things. and if we speak about sterilization probably the topic is like an endless ocean my topic in my talk i would be discussing the basic minimum the bare minimum that as a clinician all of us should know and should maintain for our operation theater this is required to prevent untoward incidences like these for sterilization the aim is a complete killing of all microbes including spores so the process would be in four parts cleaning which has been discussed then assembling and packing it into the sterilizer sterilizer and then storing and distribution along with documentation the most common methods that we use are autoclaves hot air or oven or dry heat eto or low temperature methods which includes epo sterilizer or plasma sterilizers and chemical sterilants like lotaldehyde coming to the first one this autoclave is used for heat resistant instruments like metal instruments and the process of autoclave that Dr. Manish has shown is after proper cleaning the instruments are dried and they are packed while packing within the instrument we place class 5 indicators to show whether the process has taken place completely or not and then once it is packed in the tray an outside indicator is placed on the tray and then the uh, uh, the the stuff goes into the autoclave machine where under steam under pressure kills the microbes and this pro uh, method is like the best method among all available techniques so once we open the autoclave and the, once the process has been completed and the items must be dry before use we have uh, like indicator like before uh, which is put on the tray so on the tray before we autoclave the indicators usually are say in this case it is green and once the autoclave process is complete it turns black so this indicator just shows that the instrument has gone into the autoclave and the autoclave process has run but class 1 indicators like this will never show you whether the process is complete or incomplete so inside the instrument tray we leave another indicators which are class 5 indicators so they are kept inside the tray so the, the color change of the indicators which are inside the tray or the class 5 indicators which you see here is like pinkish to brown that shows that the process of high temperature pressure and humidity both has been dealt with adequately in the process of sterilization once we have the instrument tray that there should be a accurate labeling with the date of processing expiry date also once a while some of the so some of the like indicators may not tell us immediately whether the process is complete or not and at times there may be a need to recall the instruments so if we have a documentation it will be easy to recall certain instruments if we know that they are not well sterilized a dry heat sterilization is a method which in our rot we use only for drying the instruments now some of the uh, uh, instruments they cannot withstand high temperature and for them we use ETO, eto sterilization or plasma sterilization the eto process again would be same like cleaning packing 
and uh, with indicators, and they are packed into the instrument. And the once the process is complete, you can see the change. There is a change in the color of the indicator. In this case, from light green to brown. So this process, the ETU gas which is released in the machine, it alkylates and destroys the microbes. The importance of this process is that it, it is uh, effective for heat labile instruments, but the problem is it is quite time consuming. And for these kind of machines, we'll have to have a completely different setup. We might have to have a pollution control certificate, other things. So most of the hospitals, what they use is they outsource uh, the ETO uh, sterilization process. The new uh, machine which has come up is a plasma uh, sterilizer. In this case, it's not the ETO gas which is toxic. Here we use hydrogen peroxide, which is raised to a high temperature and converted to plasma. And this gas is released into the machine. The, uh, the stuff which is uh, sterilized in this machine is similar to the, the one that we use for ETO. The advantage of this machine is that it requires a short time. In about 75 minutes, we get the uh, material out of out for, and it's ready for use. The problem with these machines is that they have a small and limited capacity for the load. Coming to the chemical sterilization, in some of the surgeries where the tissue loss and blood loss is too high, the instruments need to be cleaned with a chemical sterilizer, which includes 2% glutyl dehyde. So we have four trays. We place the instruments in the first tray, along with the, along with the chemical. And then the, in the next three trays, it is washed with sterile water. And after that, it is again uh, put into the process of autoclaving or ETU. So of the methods which are available, autoclave method is probably the best method. Uh, and it's probably sufficient for most of the ophthalmic instruments. In cases where we cannot uh, uh, use autoclave, uh, ETO sterilization of plasma system works well. Coming to the quality indicators, which we have already discussed during autoclave, mainly we have chemical uh, quality indicators. The first one which we have discussed is the one which we use on the tray, and the color change shows that the process of autoclave or ETO has been done. The class five indicators, which are there on the left side, they are the ones which show that the process of, uh, uh, the complete process of uh, sterilization has been attended. And uh, uh, like the, the stuff which has come out from the sterilizer is ster sterile and ready for use. A class two indicator like Bovidic, we have discussed in the previous presentation, it shows that the air removal is adequate from the autoclave. Coming to the most important indicators, which are the biological indicators. These are the most important indicators. Many of us don't use it, but it is recommended that it should be used at least once in a week. So in these indicators, there are spores of resistant organisms. Once these organisms are exposed to high temperature of autoclave or the dry heat and the ETO cycle, the spores are killed. So usually the, the plan is that it is put in the autoclave machine, and once it is out from the autoclave machine with sterilizer, the spore area is crushed, and the spores fall down on the media which is there below. And the instrument which is there on the lower part, it, the tube is placed in the instrument, and within one to two hours, you can get the result, whether the, the uh, process of sterilization is taking place adequately or not. If there is no color change, that means that the process of sterilization is adequately being done. So there will be instances wherein the spore test is positive. That means the, sp the, the spore growth is there, or it is microbial monitoring has failed. But the chemical indicators and other indicators shows that uh, it is being done adequately. So the spore test is the definitive test. If the spore test sh is positive, that means that the process is inadequate and it needs to be looked into. There, there may be need to repeat the spore test. And if the report, uh, the second test is also uh, positive, that means that we need to look into the system and the instrument which is being sterilized with, with that, that particular system is not good for use in the operation theater. So to conclude, uh, like even if we don't go into the details of the, each process, if like we have a sterilized instrument, we must look into the labels which are there on the tray and make sure that, the, that they have undergone the sterilization process and we should inspect each item to note that the pack which is there in front of us has no tear, puncture, or any moisture droplets in them. And if there is any doubt about the sterility of the instruments or uh, the kit, then it should be re-sterilized or discarded. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ravi. Just to ask one question, how frequently should we use boiled dick indicator? The general recommendation is once in a week it should be used. And what about the biological? Biological again, one week at least. Once a week. And is it mandatory to have uh, ETO sterilizer? Uh, 
No, it's not mandatory, but some of the instruments, like uh, for especially for the VR instrument, they need to, to be uh, like, uh, it, uh, it, it needs to be done because they are heat labile. So, but many of the hospitals have outs outsourced their activities, so it is done in the other hospitals, the, big, the bigger setups which have the facility, and the instrument can be used. Thank you. We can take a question from the audience. audience for their patient hearing and I thank all my co-instructors for their <laughs> valuable time. Thank you so much.